Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are back going to be doing a recap video of the round of 32 as well as a preview of the Sweet 16. First of all, we'll start off. I'll show you guys how I'm doing. These brackets up here really don't matter, but you can see not doing horribly. And then the 10th and final bracket, obviously my main one, 81%, uh, um, better than 81% of the bracket. And I would be even higher if Northern Iowa and Xavier didn't blow their games because I had both of them winning. Uh, but still, still extremely happy with my bracket. Still got uh, three of my four Final Four teams left. Not much, not a lot of people can say that. Because um, a lot of people had Michigan State, Kentucky. Um, I saw a few Cals. Uh, let's see. Is that about it? I saw a Seton Hall in the Final Four for someone. Uh, I saw a Purdue. There's, a, there's, there's, there's still a lot of teams left that people had. West Virginia, there's one that was in the Final Four for a couple of people. Um, but let's hop into this. We'll start um, in the South Region bracket. So we have Kansas facing off against Maryland. Kansas beat UConn in the round of 32. UConn uh, fell behind thanks to big runs against them by Kansas. I believe there was a 19-0 run, a 16-0 run. And then was there like a 12-0 run uh, that they put on UConn? Um, UConn played them tough in the second half, brought it all the way back to, I believe, 8 or 6. And uh, they, they looked to make it a game, and then Kansas kind of went on a little mini run of like 8 straight points to, to balloon it back out to 16. So that was... Uh, that was kind of... That was rough for UConn. They played pretty well against the best team in the... Um, well, the top-seeded tournament team... Um, not necessarily the best, but the top-seeded tournament team, I'll, I'll say that. Uh, they did play them pretty tough, um, and then uh, so Kansas will move moved on to the uh, Sweet 16, setting up their matchup with Maryland, who beat Hawaii in the round of 32. Hawaii gave them a heck of a game, um, and the, but uh, Hawaii inevitably couldn't keep up near the end. I believe Bobbitt had a pretty bad game for Hawaii, Um the threes, I believe, weren't falling for Maryland early. They really never fell, but they finally put they kind of pushed the lead out near the end of the game and was able to uh, to finish off Hawaii. So setting up Kansas, Maryland, and if you look at this, I have if I, if I would have picked Iowa, not Temple, I would have had a perfect bracket in the East. Perfect bracket in the East. Um, we, there were two upsets in the East, so it's not like a it's not like that was an easy feat to do, I guess, but. I did have pretty much a perfect bracket in the East, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, setting up Kansas-Maryland, which should be a pretty good matchup. Mellow Trimble versus... I don't know who they'll have on him. If they'll have Frank Mason, Wayne Selden, or Devontae Graham, who's going to be matched up with Mellow Trimble, and who's going to be matched up with Rashid Suleiman. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, down low, it should be interesting with Diamond Stone against... Um, I'm assuming he won't be on Perry Ellis, but that's kind of the premier big man matchup is Perry Ellis versus Diamond Stone, even though I think Diamond Stone will be on... Uh, what's his face? Jamari Trailer probably, and either Lehman or Carter will be on Ellis... Um, so that should be an interesting matchup, to say the least. Um, I do believe Kansas pulls it out. I'm kind of wanting Maryland to win, but um, I think Kansas will pull it out. That's tonight. Uh, this video should get up around 4 p.m. Eastern. You can see it's 1 p.m. now. Um, I just have... It, it probably could go up right after I'm done recording this, but I like to kind of spread my videos out as I release them each day. And a Dark Souls video went up at noon, so... 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock are usually the next two upload times for me, just giving you guys a little background there. But those that game is tonight. That follows the matchup that I am most interested in. To, and, well, I don't know if I'm more interested in this or the Oklahoma matchup, but we've got Villanova-Miami. Uh, should be a fun game. Good guard play on both sides um, and two good bigs for each team. Uh, Miami beat Wichita State. Miami got out to a 27-6 lead and then had to kind of hold on to that lead as Wichita State came storming back. Uh, Wichita State outscored them 51 to... Is that 30-something? 30, 30... 38? 38, I think. 51-38 to down the stretch, but it wasn't enough for Wichita State. Wichita State actually took a brief lead, I believe, in that game. 
Uh, it's been a while since the games were on, so sorry if I get any information wrong. It's been a little bit of time, and there were thir- there were 16 games that I watched between Saturday and Sunday, so brain is a little bit uh, not not remembering exactly what happened. I guess that's what I should probably say um, with a few things, but. Miami beat Wichita State. That's really all that matters. They almost blew that lead, which was so ridiculous. Um, and then we had Villanova putting the trouncing on Iowa up 34 points at one point. Um, Iowa looked decent in the first half against Temple. And then the next three halves of basketball that they played, they just didn't look good. There was a point in the Villanova game where the, there were like two points where they brought it kind of close. They did at the very end of the game, and then Jay Wright put the starters back in to, uh, to make sure that Hi- Iowa wasn't going to make some crazy last-minute comeback. Um, I believe Josh Hart hit a three, and that was pretty much the end of it uh, there, which sets up Villanova-Miami, which is a very interesting matchup. Uh, you got Angel Rodriguez and Sheldon McClellan versus uh, Ryan Archie Diacono and Josh Hart. Um, with, uh, what's his name, Jakiri down low against Ochefu. Should be interesting. Um, the, the good thing that, uh, that the, that Villanova has for them is they've gotten, uh, Jalen, or Daryl Reynolds. Why do I keep wanting to call him Jalen Reynolds? I think, I believe it's Daryl Reynolds. I, I, I just know him as Reynolds, okay? I forget, but I believe he's, he's, you guys know who I'm talking about. He's been getting a lot of, uh, minutes, um, uh, because Ochefu's ankle's been kind of not, it's been sore, I guess. It's just been kind of, they haven't been really tested against UNC Asheville or Iowa, really, if you look at the scores. A 30-point win and a 20, or a 19-point win. Not really anything to be too concerned about, I guess. So they've been giving Reynolds a lot more run- minutes, I believe. I, I, I'm like 90% sure it's Daryl Reynolds, but... um. He's been getting a lot of minutes, so if Ochefu and Jakiri get into some foul trouble, I believe Villanova has kind of the edge because Reynolds has been getting a lot of minutes here in the tournament and in the Big East tournament he got a lot of minutes. So I like I do like Villanova in that game. Uh, I think Miami's going to give some problems with Rodriguez and McClellan, but I'm looking for someone else to score because if you think about it, the three for Villanova, if Archie Diagono cancels out Rodriguez and Hart cancels out McClellan and... Um, Jakiri cancels out Ochefu, who is canceling out Chris Jenkins for uh, Miami. So that's kind of where I've gone with this. See, like, if when Vill- if no- Villanova meets up with Kansas, Kansas has three really good guards in Selden, Graham, and uh, Mason. They can match up with Hart, Jenkins, and Archie Diakono, and Perry Ellis can match up with Ochefu. That's, see, the- there's a canceling out effect that I like to think of within my mind when I'm looking at games. Uh, but Villanova, Miami tonight at 7:10, Maryland and Kansas at 9:40 in the East Region for a chance to meet in the Elite Eight. Uh, moving on to the East bracket, uh, that bottom just completely is slaughtered. It looks nothing like what I thought, but the top, 100%. So, so good, good stuff. Um, we had North Carolina meeting up with Indiana tomorrow, I believe. Yeah. Tomorrow night, Friday night at, it doesn't say, but I believe, I believe, let me look it up on my phone because I believe the times, the times have been posted, but let me go over these. North Carolina beat Providence. Chris Dunn and company came all the way back. I believe it was like 51-51 tied, and then Ben Bentel fouled out on a stupid foul. He shouldn't have made the foul. It was just a dumb decision by him to foul. Um, so we had, um... At 51-51, then North Carolina went on one of their patent North Carolina runs of the season where they'll play close against a team that they probably should beat easily, and then they'll all of a sudden just tear off on a run, uh, and they they put Providence away. I know Chris Dunn announced he's going to go to the NBA. Um, in my opinion, if he wasn't on Providence and he was on a big-name school, uh, not that Providence is a small school or anything. If you watch basketball, you should know who Providence is, uh, but... He didn't get as much exposure as if he was on a team like Indiana or Kentucky or whatever. He'd be the best. I believe he is the best point guard in college basketball. He just didn't get the exposure. So not enough people know who he is and not enough people have watched him play. Uh, So he did announce he's going to go to the draft. If I was Bentle without Chris Dunn, I would enter the draft as well. But that's just my opinion. Uh, so moving on now to the Indiana-Kentucky game. That was a really great game to watch. The officiating was pretty bad. Um, 
Oh, okay, well, let me tell you this. Indiana and North Carolina play tomorrow night at uh, 9.57, so the late game, almost 10 o'clock, um, which is rough for us East Coast people. Like, I get up for work the next day. Like, tomorrow I got work it. I got work in the morning, so tonight I got to stay up late and watch basketball, and then I got to get up for work. Um, but we got Indiana, Kentucky. That was one heck of a game. Uh, it, it was poorly officiated, but it was poorly officiated kind of both ways. I'm not going to say one team got cheated really in that game it was just pretty bad officiating both ways um but indiana pulls out the win 73 67 tyler ulis did everything he could to get kentucky that win uh he played amazing in that game i believe 29 points um and he kept them close at the end of the game when indiana kind of had ballooned the lead out a little bit he actually kept that game pretty close he hit a three he hit two layups um but it, it was a valiant effort by kentucky um but Indiana pulls out the win. Um, I don't know why. I, I, Kentucky was clearly the better better team. I don't know why. What After watching, I was like, why did I pick Indiana? Because I thought Kentucky was going to go on one of those uh, North Carolina runs and kind of put Indiana away, but it never came because Jamal Murray never got on target. I believe one of nine from three-point range for him, so not the greatest game. But that moved, that moved Indiana on to play North Carolina. Now going to the bottom half of the bracket where I got every single game wrong. That's almost as impressive as getting every game right, is getting every game... Oh, no, I got the Xavier game right. I, I forgot about that. I got one game right. Um, and so we have Notre Dame versus Wisconsin. That game is tomorrow night at 727. It'll be the second game to tick, tip off. And so we had Notre Dame, Stephen F. Austin, and Wisconsin Xavier. Uh, Stephen F. Austin had a five-point lead. Was it 75-70 with like two and a half minutes to go? And they played the most retarded offense I have ever seen in my entire life. They just dribbled it around, and then Thomas Walkup took some crappy shot at the end of the shot clock every time almost. And they blew that game against Notre Dame, and then they couldn't box out. They allowed three. It was almost four tip uh, tip opportunities. There was one tip that kind of didn't even make it up there, and they got tipped again. Uh, so Notre Dame, though, gets the win, a very good win against Stephen F. Austin. They played great defense down the stretch. Um, one, If they didn't get one of those stops, it would have been Stephen F. Austin moving on, not them. Uh, but it was a good win by Notre Dame over Stephen F. Austin. Uh, Wisconsin gets the last second three by Bronson Koenig um, over Xavier. Xavier had a big lead in the final minutes, too. I believe it was like six, and they could have hold on to it. Um, they played some pretty bad offense, and so... Xavier Xavier goes down, the number two seed goes down, making the path pretty easy for North Carolina, if I do say so myself, because they're going to get a six seed in Notre Dame that they demolished in the regular season, or in the uh, in the ACC tournament the last time they played. Uh, they did lose a game to Notre Dame, um, but they just, like I said, they just looked disinterested in that game. They won't be disinterested in the NCAA tournament, I will tell you that, so I will assume, I'm going to assume that North Carolina's not going to get beat by Notre Dame. And I don't think Wisconsin has the firepower to keep up with North Carolina. I think I think either matchup for them is going to be pretty easy for North Carolina. Um, Indiana, though, uh, Indiana, I don't think would have any problems with Wisconsin, and nor do I think they'd have any problems with Notre Dame. But I think Notre Dame presents a bigger issue for Indiana than uh, Wisconsin. Moving on to the Midwest bracket, also played tomorrow. We have Iowa State and Virginia. My team left in this horrible bracket. This bracket, I couldn't, you, you couldn't have gone much worse on this bracket other than the fact that I have Iowa State left. Uh, but Iowa State, Virginia at 7-10 tomorrow, and then Gonzaga, Syracuse at 9-40. Uh, let's start off with Virginia, who beat Butler. Butler gave them a heck of a game. Butler held, hung in there for the longest time, and then at the very end, uh, Kellen Dunham couldn't get a three to go that would have kept them really into the game and put some serious pressure on Virginia. He couldn't hit it, and that was pretty much the end of that uh, when he missed that three. And then I believe Roosevelt Jones missed a, uh, was it a jumper or a layup? He missed a two-pointer uh, that would have kind of kept a little bit of pressure on Virginia, but... Virginia moves on, the number one seed escapes Butler, and moves on to play Iowa State, who took care of Arkansas Little Rock. Uh, Josh Hagens for Arkansas Little Rock, after having, I believe he had 28 against Purdue, had 6, I believe, against Iowa State. Don't quote those numbers right, uh, but it's something similar to that. He had 
25 plus points against Purdue, and then he had under 10 against Iowa State. Uh, Iowa State has looked pretty good through the tournament so far. Not impressive, but pretty good. I think uh, they've got a shot. I like Monty Morris and uh, Niang against Virginia. I want to see Virginia score. I want to see them try to score against a good team. Because really, they played Hampton and Butler. Who knows how good Butler really is. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to see how uh, how Virginia keeps up. Because Iowa State's going to score. I don't really care how good in Virginia's defense is. Iowa State is going to score at the basketball. Um, and I don't think it's going to be... I think Virginia is going to have to put up 65-plus points. And against a good team, I don't know if they can do it. Even though Iowa State sometimes looks like they... They don't exactly care about defense. That's not really the proper term, but that they don't, that they're semi disinterested in, um, in playing de defense. Um, so it should be an interesting game. That's tomorrow night. Like I said, that should be, that's a game I'm really looking forward to. The other one in the region is probably the one that has a lot of intrigue, but it really is kind of meh about it. Um, we've got Gonzaga and Syracuse. Gonzaga put the whooping on Utah and just thoroughly embarrassed them. I didn't like Utah to begin with. That's why I picked Fresno State to beat them, and I had Seton Hall beating them. So there are points on my bracket where I'm like, well, I didn't get the points, but I uh, I knew what I was talking about, <laughs> like that I didn't like Utah, and I was 100% correct as they got blasted by Gonzaga. There's not really much to talk about in that game. Gonzaga just took them out behind the woodshed and beat them to death. Um... Then you had Syracuse, who was in a pretty close game with Middle Tennessee, until Syracuse decided to do the exact same thing, take Middle Tennessee out behind the shed and just beat them to death. Uh, and so that that's a pretty much a wrap on those two games. There's not a whole lot to talk about. Syracuse and Gonzaga embarrassed their last two op opponents. Um, I like Syracuse in the game. Don't ask me why. I just like Syracuse. I think Malachi Richardson and Menage are going to somehow carry Syracuse to the Elite Eight. And I swear if Syracuse gets carried all the way to the sweet, or to the Final Four, that is going to be ridiculous if Syracuse makes the Final Four. Uh, it Syracuse will be the one that'll be the most ridiculous if any of the teams left make the Final Four. It's going to be Syracuse. That one's just going to be ridiculous. They've only got to win two more games to get there, and uh, I think they have a decent shot to get there. Uh, but that's going to do it for that bracket. Moving on to the final bracket, the West bracket that matches up Oregon and Duke tonight at 10 o'clock, and Texas A&M, Oklahoma at 7.37. Uh, this bracket held completely chalk with 1, 2, 3, and 4 advancing, even though 5 and 6 lost in their, in their game. So did 7. 5, 6, 7, and, and 9. Not 8. I thought 8 lost too. I was like, wow, that's kind of crazy. But Oregon, Duke, Oregon survived against St. Joe's. Uh, they did not look good after looking unbeatable against Holy Cross, even though it's Holy Cross. Like I said, I knew Oregon was going to mutilate Holy Cross, uh, but they did not look good against St. Joe's. Uh, even though DeAndre Bembry, uh, really good player for St. Joe's, uh, Oregon should have won that game easily, and they didn't, which makes the matchup with Duke really interesting, uh, because Duke had a huge lead on Yale at halftime and then almost lost it um, in the second half. So it should be interesting. Two teams that didn't play as well as they should have in their round of 32 games are going to meet up in the Sweet 16 to find out. Uh, it, it should be an interesting game. Uh, that's why I, like, I really like Oklahoma now uh, because neither of them looked very good, Oregon or Duke, uh, in their round of 32 matchups. I'm really liking Oklahoma now, even though Oklahoma did not look really that good either. Uh, they did put up a bunch of points, which is what Oklahoma does. Uh, they're averaging 50 or 85 points. Why did I say 50? 85 points. Um, what am I going to say? What did I want to say? I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, well. Texas A&M got so lucky that Northern Iowa is a bunch of heaping garbage. I don't know how you blow a 12-point lead in 33 seconds. It's still bog with a dunk. They even got a dunk in there. So they got outscored. They they allowed 15 points. 15 points in 30 seconds. 15 points. 
And then Washpin and Jesperson got two of the stupidest fouls that you could get. They just totally didn't need the fouls, and they were just stupid. So that second overtime was just dumb. Dumb. They didn't stand a chance in that second overtime. I knew it. I knew it was over as soon as it went to overtime uh, to begin with. So, oh, Northern Iowa, you bunch of idiots. I can't believe you cost me points. I had you in the Sweet 16. Why did you have to do this to me? Oh my gosh, my bracket would have been so beautiful if Northern Iowa and Xavier wouldn't have choked. I hate you, Northern Iowa. You bunch of garbage. I'm so I'm still annoyed about that stupid game. It blows my mind how they managed to 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 lose that game. All Evan Washpin had to do when he got trapped in that corner with like seven seconds to go was chuck the ball to the other end of the court. Just chuck it to the other end of the court. And then just play some defense at the other end of the court. Instead, and someone needs to teach Northern Iowa how to throw the ball off of players because they just, like, chuck it at their feet. And this is the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And it is so easy to dodge. Texas A&M's players were way out of the way by the time that they threw it. You want to hit them, like, at the hip level. Because, or hip or thigh level, because it's hard to catch, and it's hard to dodge. And if you miss, it doesn't bounce straight up in the air for an easy catch for him. Like, dude, Northern Iowa, you guys are pathetic. I would I would just quit basketball. I'd be done with that. I'd be like, like LeBron said, I would just quit basketball if that happened to me, because that's a joke. Like, you guys are pathetic. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. All right, moving on. Oklahoma VCU. That was a great game. Um, Oklahoma had multiple leads where they could have just put VCU away and they couldn't do it. But Buddy Heald exploded in that second half. He ended up with 36 points, I believe. Uh, that's that's the player of the year that I like seeing. Uh, Buddy Heald. I think I think they take care of business against A&M tonight. I don't think it's I think it's a game, but I don't think. I didn't like how I don't like how Texas A&M looked against Northern Iowa, and really, except for one half and like two minutes against Green Bay, so like 58 minutes of the of the 80 they've played, Texas A&M has not looked really that good. So I'm liking I'm liking Oklahoma tonight in the matchup. I like Buddy Heald to score a lot of points because. I don't really see how Texas A&M matches up. I really don't. And I think that Texas A&M is going to be put into a point where they're going to have to take Tyler Davis, their best player, off the field. Or off the field, off the court. And I think it's going to present some issues because if I was Oklahoma, I'm going small ball. I'm putting I'm putting um, Woodard, Cousins, um, James, and Heald out on the court with Latin. Or Spangler, if you put Spangler out there, you can just spread Texas A&M out and embarrass them. I think Oklahoma, if they play this correctly, could just embarrass Texas A&M. Because I don't think Caruso is going to be able to guard Woodard or or Cousins, whoever they put him on. I don't trust any of the Texas A&M players to guard Buddy Heald. I don't think anybody can. Nor I think like against Duke, Brandon Ingram presents a problem for Buddy Heald. And against Oregon, I don't really know. They would just have, Oregon's got a lot of decent, a lot of good, decent players. Think how good Oregon would have been if, um, what was his name? Jonathan, I forget his name. The really good player that went pro last year, if he would have stayed. They would have been ridiculous. They could have been like an undefeated team because that kid was, that kid was really good. Um, but that is going to, that's going to do it, guys. If you want my predictions, I've got Oregon playing Oklahoma, obviously. I've got Iowa State playing Syracuse. I got the Q's somehow making it to the Elite Eight. I don't I don't know how that happens. I've got Kansas Villanova, and I've got North Carolina, Wisconsin. Um, because I want to see Wisconsin, North Carolina. We've already seen Notre Dame, North Carolina. I want to see something new. Wisconsin, North Wisconsin, North Carolina. My pick. Hopefully my boys stay alive. Hopefully the Sooners. And the Wildcats, the two teams that I'm vested in um, down the stretch here. Hopefully both of them stay alive tonight. Both play at the same time. You better know that I'm going to have my two flat screens. I'm going to take my uh, my gaming flat screen downstairs uh, and try to hook it up. I'm gonna I have like a hole through my bedroom floor to the downstairs. 
um, where I ran all the wires uh, for t the extra TV wires and all that different stuff up to my room. So I have TV and internet, better internet in my room. So I was able to put a router in my room um, because the wall that it has to come through, through the floor, we're supposed to have like 100 down, 60 up or something like that. And I was getting like 15 down and two up uh, through the floor. So I had to do a little bit of maneuvering and now I get like 75 down and 50 up or something like that but that is going to do it for this episode guys I hope you all enjoyed drop a like if you did subscribe if you haven't I'm looking oh god don't want to open that up um I'm looking forward to the games tonight I hope you guys are too let me know who you guys have uh in the four games tonight or let me know how many teams you got left uh in the in your final four I'm always interested to know but I hope you guys enjoyed and I will catch you guys in the next video peace out